We've been talking a lot about the uh, news of the day, and um, one of the big stories we haven't gotten into yet is the fact that Senator Dianne Feinstein from California uh, has released the entire transcript of the Senate Judiciary Committee's interview with Glenn Simpson, former Wall Street reporter who is now head of this group called Fusion GPS, which ended up um, producing the famous dossier on Donald Trump and possible connections with uh, Russian officials. Daniel Lippman is the co-author of Politico's Great Playbook. Hello, Daniel. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in. Um, I just got to say before we uh, move on that Playbook, if you want to know what's going on in Washington, D.C., go to Politico, sign up for Playbook, as I have for years and years and years. It's the absolute best source of inside information and what's happening in Washington. And they now only have not only the morning edition, but the afternoon edition. There's so much news out there that you have to uh, keep readers up to date as to Trump's tweets and everything happening in D.C. uh, from 7 to a.m. to noon. Yeah, it's true. What was was true in the morning isn't always true in the afternoon. (laughs) Things move too quickly. And we know what was true the night before is not always (laughs) true in the morning. Yes. Uh, Meanwhile, some reaction to things we've talked about already. Yes, indeed. A couple of comments. We'll go first to our YouTube chat room where our friend stoner dude says <laughs> bannon on steve bannon bannon always has that blank look in his eye like he just got out of a battle or has eaten too much gluten <laughs> which i think is pretty great do you think he should try the gluten-free diet he should try a gluten-free diet maybe that would people help. are always telling him to you know eat better you know they've had like they should give him raspberries and <laughs> almonds to eat so <laughs> maybe he'll look better if uh, and he if actually he, he you know he sticks to the no alcohol uh diet too so he's he quit drinking a while ago wait really yep boy he okay. looks like a drunk <laughs> well, no, former, former no no longer <laughs> he's reformed himself also, uh, we are on Twitter, at BP Show, at BP Show. On the meeting that uh, Trump had yesterday, <laughs> the very un- confusing un- meeting. Unbelievable. Tom says, uh, I watched the meeting yesterday. The emperor clearly has no clothes. <laughs> KG, however, says, I watched the meeting, and unfortunately, I think it probably played very well with Trump's base. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but... Uh, well, if, if anything he does plays well with, it's not hard to please Trump for him to please his Although base. Although I'm sure some of the base was thinking, wait, he's just totally throwing Republicans' ideas <laughs> right. under the bus. Why did we vote for him again? He, you know, yeah. I, I love how when Kevin McCarthy, yeah. uh, he said, I don't think uh, you know Senator Feinstein meant it that way. And he said, I think she actually did. Let me stand up for her. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that exchange... It's Where Feinstein go to the says, history record we need a clean DACA bill. He said, yeah, that's a good idea. And then Kevin McCarthy says, oh, no, oh, 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 oh. back and forth. You just imagine what was in McCarthy's head. I'm like, oh, yeah. what is Trump imagine. doing now? I cannot imagine. Like, these guys that are so used <laughs> to being on message, and they've been on message for so long to see a guy who's so off message. By the way, on the DACA ruling, we had a couple of comments that came in that just said, holy cow, uh, can't believe we actually started the show with good news for once. <laughs> Which yeah, that's that's a little too real. Anyway, if you, you have, have your to, comments, you have to count your you know lucky stars when you get them. Yeah, exactly. If you have any comments, send them to us on Twitter at BP Show at BP Show, and remember to find us in the chat room, youtubecom slash show. All right, again, Daniel Lipman, uh, Playbook, Politico. What, first of all, what is Fusion GPS? So it's an opposition research firm that companies and private wealthy individuals will hire. Uh, to look up public records and also dig up dirt on their opponents or people they want to find compromising material uh, on. And so this was started by a couple ex-Wall Street Journal reporters, including uh, Glenn Simpson, who is a well-known figure in D.C. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they got wrapped up in this because uh, the Washington Free Beacon, a conservative publication funded by Republican billionaire Paul Singer, first hired them to look at Trump. Uh, Let me just slow down a little bit. So uh, just to just understand, opposition research is totally legal. Yeah, Everybody does it. I was a candidate. I did it, right? You want to know everything, including the dirt. <laughs> on both yourself and your opponent. Exactly. I was going <laughs> to say on yourself, on your opponent, and on yourself, right? Yeah. And there are firms that just do this. And it's pretty uh, lucrative because yeah, sure. they know that these guys... 
are diggers. Uh, we were talking before the show, uh, you know, one of uh, Glenn Simpson's old colleagues, you know, Tim Berger, who is a journalist in D.C. for Roll Call and Bloomberg in Time, he said in the New York Times profile of, of Simpson that uh, this guy will find any document that is out there because, you know, they have they've honed their techniques over decades. Yeah, they're very good at it. And you get the information and you use it or you don't use it. I mean, some of it you hold back yeah. uh, in case they, they, you know, they, they issue a dirty attack on you. You've got some you counterpunch. Some leverage. you got some counterpunch and that kind of stuff. So at any rate, that's GPS. And they were hired by, now your point, yeah. they're first hired by, this is, I think, very, very important to understand, by during the primary, they were hired by the Washington Beacon, which is a conservative publication. Go yeah. ahead, pick up from there. Uh, you know, funded by uh, Paul Singer, one of the GOP's most prominent donors. Right. After... You know, as Trump was winning the nomination at the end of that process, uh, the Free Beacon, uh, you know, they had to, you know, not pay them anymore because Trump was a nominee. You support, you get behind right. the party. So they were uh, trying to stop Trump from getting the nomination. Yeah. But right. once that's like done, yeah. then uh, Fusion GPS, uh, you know, the retainer for that uh, dossier, uh, and it may not have been a dossier, but just research on Trump, uh, was picked up by Perkins Coie, which is a Democratic. Uh, law firm. It's Hillary Clinton's law firm, mm -hmm. uh, her campaign mm -hmm. firm, and they started bankrolling uh, these guys to uh, dig Continue into the same yeah. work, basically, until yeah. you until the until Hillary is defeated or she wins. Okay, and Fusion GPS is doing this work, and then they hired somebody to help them out. So they hired. It kind of reads like a spy novel, but they no, no, no. In fact, I got <laughs> thank you uh, here, here in the wall in the. Uh, Washington Post the other day, Meg Kelly's story. She said, the Russian probe got its start with a drunken conversation, an ex-spy, WikiLeaks, and a distracted FBI. You can't now, make it up. No. <laughs> if that if that isn't the making of a great movie, I don't know what is, right? So, so they, just to pick up the story, they... Uh, Fusion GPS, they usually use open record requests, but sometimes you get to the bottom of the records and there's more to find, but you have to hire someone with knowledge of uh, a country or an organization. So they hired Christopher Steele, a former British spy uh, who had lots of experience in Russia, uh, and he had a network of contacts there. And so, uh, you know, he proceeded to do his work. He didn't actually pay his sources in Russia. He was himself paid. Uh, and, you know, they produced this dossier, which he has said it's 70 to 90 percent true. And he hasn't said what 10 to 30 percent. I don't think he knows <laughs> yeah. because there's some salacious details. But it's right. it's full of allegations of impropriety in terms of. Uh, possible money laundering and maybe bribery on Trump's behalf. When you're a real estate developer, it's not a, you know, that's that or, that business is not for the faint of heart and for people with entirely clean hands. You know, any real estate business, you need to sometimes grease the wheels. Now, um, the dossier is public, right? I mean, yeah, BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed published, published the about entire a year thing, ago. right? I must say, I can't believe I haven't read. How long is it? It's, uh, I think, 25 to 35 pages. Is I forget it? the oh, exact. Oh, that's not too bad. I, I, I've got to go back and read that, but I know it has been pub public. And in it, among other things, let's forget the salacious stuff. We didn't talk about golden showers here on this program because this is a family program, unless Peter Ogburn picks it up uh, from there. Uh, yeah. uh, but di didn't he, f he found out that the rush had been... It, the Russians have been trying to influence Donald Trump for a long time. Yeah. Right? This was not something new. He's gone to, he went to Moscow during, you know, Miss Universe. Uh, that was the most famous uh, Russia. I mean, he also. And he was uh, trying to do real estate deals yeah, he's in been, Russia. He and his sons have been uh, published as saying, uh, at least one of his sons, that, the, you know, Moscow and Russia was a, the golden ticket for keeping the company mm -hmm. making a lot of money. Uh and they also during the 2008 crash, right? The Trump uh, Trump Inc. was kept afloat yeah. by Russian flow of Russian money. And Deutsche Bank, they haven't, you know. I think Robert Mueller has subpoenaed some of the records uh, mm -hmm. from that, uh, which <laughs> also has Jared Kushner uh, bank accounts. Uh, and so, you know, it's kind of un, you know, it's unpeeling an onion to see. Uh, 
what happened with Trump and Russia. I think they also talk about how uh, they found evidence that he was trying, uh, he was getting blackmailed. So uh, why was he so pro Russia when he usually, uh, you know, was this just in league with his uh, support of? people who are kind of authoritarian figures or, you know, why was he especially uh, talking favorably about Putin when the Republican Party establishment hates Putin? Right. So Steele is digging. He finds all this stuff out of these these contacts. Uh, as you say, even maybe evidence that the, that Trump was being blackmailed by, by Russians because of what they had on him. Or potentially and had on potentially him. Potentially had on him. And then... Christopher Steele goes to the FBI. Yeah. Why? So why? Uh, because, uh, as Glenn Simpson said in the leaked uh, or in the released transcript, uh, when you are driving the car and you see a crash happen, uh, you and there's no police there, maybe you should just call nine one one to let them know. And so this was in the middle of the 2016 campaign, uh, and you know Steele with Simpson's. Uh, agreement goes to a contact at the FBI and says, hey, uh, we think that Trump may be getting blackmailed by the Russians. This is, you know, I'm, I'm a mm-hmm. former spy. I know the Russians well. Uh, he, you know, he worked with people at the FBI. That's how he uh, knew someone there. And uh, people thought, oh, Steele and the dossier provided the evidence for the FBI to pursue the, to pursue an inquiry into Trump. Uh, that's actually not true. And uh, you know, a few weeks ago, it was revealed that uh, it was actually George Papadopoulos, the former Trump campaign aide, low-level figure, but also, you know, when your low-level figures played an important yeah. role in the campaign, right. he was talking to an Australian diplomat uh, about whether uh, Russia had documents on uh, on uh, Hillary Clinton, maybe the, those Comprom- WikiLeaks, Compromat, or more not Compromat, but but the. They had hacked emails, uh-huh. and they were going to release them. So this is the drunken conversation yeah. that's referred to, right? And then that Australian diplomat, he talks to his colleague, the uh, Australian ambassador, and then they go to the FBI and say, "Hey, uh, you know, FYI." And then that in, that sparks the inquiry. The material that Steele gave to the FBI adds further details to. Uh, what the FBI already had in their uh, beginning stages of the investigation, and then they go from there. Right. So, so this is all uh, a little bit of a secret, uh, maybe, or th- there's at least a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty or um, mystery about it until Senator Feinstein releases this transcript. Uh, she defends or explains, Peter, why why uh, she, she why she did this. To my knowledge, there has not been a single fact in that report that has been proven to be incorrect. So she wanted the public to see it. People are entitled to know what was said. Right. Um, in Di- for, for Feinstein to release that, why do you think she did it? Uh, so last week, uh, the uh, Republicans on the committee, they referred Steele to the uh, FBI or the DOJ uh, for a potential criminal inquiry because he, uh, you know, talked about, uh, you know, he may have misled investigators about his, you know, contacts with the media. And so Democrats felt uh, aggrieved by this because they had no hand in this uh, referral mm-hmm. to DOJ and they wanted to uh, kind of get back at uh, Grassley and the Republicans who are doing this. But in fairness to Democrats, they also felt. Uh, and Simpson, the witness, uh, you know, he felt like he had been undermined by selective leaks from the testimony. He wanted the full thing out there. And so Feinstein uh, consulted with other Democrats, both staffers and members, uh, and she pursued what she thought was the best course of action. And she did so against the wishes of Chairman Grassley, correct? Yeah, yeah. Grassley was uh, furious at this. He said this undermines... Uh, the investigation, you know, they still need to talk to witnesses like Jared Kushner uh, for, you know, his take on everything. Uh, and, you know, witnesses should feel like they are, uh, they won't be compromised or, you know, they can speak freely uh, to Senator 
investigators uh, when you have something like, like this happen. Well, his argument is somewhat undercut by the fact that the witness in this case, Glenn Simpson, had asked that his testimony be released, fully, fully released. And also the fact that if, uh, you know, if he's so concerned about uh, having all this information stay private until the end of the investigation, why it, has he probably basically been authorizing uh, or giving a wink and a nod to Republican staffers releasing uh, details of this before to hurt Simpson and undermine the cre- credibility of the uh, Trump Russia connections? Like the uh, big, biggest takeaway, if you you know, if our listeners can you know remember one thing is that uh, this organization was paid to uh, Fusion GPS was paid to research the president. They found damaging stuff, and now Republicans who are trying to curry favor with Trump uh, are basically trying to impugn anyone who is, uh, you know, who dug deep into uh, Trump's business past. And so uh, if they didn't find anything, then they would not be, uh, you know, on this attack against Fusion GPS. Right. Well, the other thing that they're using, they're not only attacking Fusion GPS, but Republicans are also using this. Um, dossier, if you will, and and Fusion GPS to try to undermine the credibility of the FBI, right? To say that the FBI basically was pro-Hillary, anti-Trump, and this whole thing was politically motivated, not just by Democrats, but by the FBI itself. Yeah, and they uh, are saying that the FBI is full of Democrats, the deep state, uh, and that's a reversal from uh, a year and a half ago during the campaign when Democrats thought uh, the, they were the same thing because all of those agents in right. the New York uh, FBI were feeding information to Rudy Giuliani, allegedly. And then he would go on Fox and say, hey, you know, this thing is coming down the pike. Right. Right. And I think it's it's a matter of, uh, you know, saying the FBI mishandled the dossier that, you know, they paid steal a little bit of money. Uh, but. You know, the FBI has a wide latitude to do lots of things in their investigations, and nothing in the dossier has been proved, uh, you know, incorrect. You know, not all of it has been substantiated, but, you know, as we've seen in the last year that the dossier has been released, everyone is talking about the Russia inquiry, and there's just so much stuff that has been uncovered by both newspapers and Mueller's folks. And so it's clearly not a fake news story, as uh, Trump would you know, have you believe. Isn't it also true... Um, that, or maybe apparent, that the FBI believes a lot of what's in Steele's report. Yeah, I think that's that's true because they uh, because of they have their own independent sources. Yeah, so I guess, they're right? they're yeah. basically using what's in uh, Steele's report and then matching it against stuff that they have found through their own investigations. And you know, we don't know everything that they have matched, but. Clearly, a good portion of uh, Steele's dossier uh, can't talk about the salacious. I don't know if that has been uh, proved, but a good portion. We believe has... it here, by the way, <laughs> uh, on the Bill Press show. We we believe every 100%. word of it. Hundred percent. But a uh, it, there's you know it's hard to deny other documents uh, where it's just revealing facts about a, Trump's a, history. And, and what impact does this dossier and, and have on the Mueller investigation? Is it now part of the Mueller investigation, do you believe? Uh, I think Mueller has read the dossier and his people have as well. Uh, and they are you know, pursuing their own investigation. I don't, uh, you know, they have great sources too, and they have a lot of resources as well. Uh, and so I don't know exactly how they're using it, but it clearly has informed their thinking into the investigation and into the president. Yeah. Is Fusion GPS still in business? Still is they you know they go to work every day. They have uh, other clients, and I think this has been great publicity for oh, God, them yeah. because now every company, <laughs> uh, maybe not Republican firms, but every company worldwide knows about it, and you know they're the most famous opposition research firm in uh, the world now. Right, um, Daniel Lipman from uh, Playbook uh, on uh, Politico, Politico dot com. Of course, sign up if you haven't already done so. Uh, and you'll be amazed at stuff that they come up with every single day. And by the way, it comes out early, too. I'm always impressed. So by we, it. we've gotten it down. Uh, it used to come out later. Now it's at uh, 6 to 6.15 every morning. Yeah. I, all I know is when, I'm, when, I, when I get in, it's there, right? 
So thanks for reading. And yeah, you can, it's well, a free subscription. So you just yeah, go to politico.com right. slash playbook. And there's a little blue button at the top of the uh, right hand page. You can uh, subscribe. Right. What time do you start preparing it? Uh, we get up between uh, three and four every morning, my two colleagues and I, uh, and then we work in a Google doc. Jake and Anna. Jake and Anna. Anna. Yeah. Uh, and so not on the weekends. We, we wake up at 7 a.m. on the weekends. So we have a little, <laughs> we get the weekend time off. You see, Peter, P- some people have a worse schedule than we do. Yeah, I was I was shocked this morning when I got up and had an email from Dan. Like, at, like when I woke up, he was already up emailing me. Yeah, all right. Any Anytime you need someone to email at 4 a.m., Peter, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, so uh, th- great information on Fusion GPS. Uh, that's just what I, what I wanted uh, and was hoping you could provide. But before we let you go, sure. I do have to ask you, what what is your take on fire and fury uh, and its impact on the American political scene, particularly here in Washington? So I'm I'm still uh, digging my way through it, but I've read all the excerpts, and uh, I think it just uh, you know it lost uh, Bannon lost his job because of the book, uh, and so whether he'll be influential in the future is an open question, uh, and I think its impact is uh, to show. President Trump, you know, at some of his weak points in his uh, last year where his own aides don't think that he can, uh, you know, read very well. He, uh, you know, my favorite part of the book is how it reveals if he doesn't have a dinner, Trump sometimes just leaves the Oval Office at 6 a.m. or 6.30, goes into the residence, uh, plops down on the bed and watches television and, and calls his friends. Like, that's an image that we, that was a little new to us. Uh... And that's hard for him to shake. What is he going to, you know, prove that he doesn't do that? Uh, and, you know, he is a man set in his own habits. My, uh, And you can't, you know, he's an avid consumer watching four to eight hours of TV every day. And that's only increased in but a most little bit. Troubling, perhaps, uh, most troubling, I think, are, the, are the, the assertions that they're White House staffers who really question the president's mental capacity. Yeah, I think when you work for a boss that undermines you every day uh, and doesn't— he contradicts s- himself and repeats himself and— yeah. And in their views, he uh, he doesn't seem to take the job as seriously uh, as uh, they should, as he should. And you saw yesterday, uh, you know, he made a, a big show that was, you know, semi-successful for 55 minutes of uh, showing he can be a, a good president. He can, you know, work across the aisle. He uh, won't— uh, you know, he's not going to call Pocahontas or Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas on, you know, yesterday yeah. because he's trying to show he's he, presidential now. Yeah. He went through that entire meeting. That's true. 55 minutes without insulting or calling anybody a name. How long is that going to last? <laughs> we don't know what, the, what he called them uh, as soon as they walked out of the room, however. Yeah. So, Daniel, so great to see you. Thanks for coming Thanks in. Thanks so much, Bill. Of course, it's the middle of the day for you right now. Yeah, I'm going to get lunch soon. Yeah, gonna be <laughs> lunch. Get downstairs and get lunch when you leave. Thanks this so much for coming in. Politico.com. show.